Hey, this is Matt Holquist here with the QuickBooks University. Wanted to put together a quick video for you on a simple little tip to help avoid uh, problems or fraud or anything with people that you might have working with you that have to get into your QuickBooks file. I see this all the time, you know, business owner hires somebody to do the accounting internally uh, or even an outside accountant and they just give them the admin password. And they say, here's the admin login, go in there, enter bills, pay bills, whatever. And they give them way too much authority, okay? Now, there are certain things though, that when you have somebody working in your QuickBooks file, you don't necessarily want them to see, uh, or you don't want them to necessarily be able to do. You know, So for example, a good practice would be what's called separation of duties. And you don't want to have, uh, let's say that your internal bookkeeper, you don't want them to be going to get the mail, going through the bills, entering the bills and paying the bills. And the reason is, is because I've seen it way too many times. That's an easy area for somebody to come into a small business and steal money. They can enter fraudulent bills. They can pay those fraudulent bills, keep the money. And before you know it, you're out tens of thousands of dollars. Okay. So here's just a simple, simple, simple little thing you can do. It takes two minutes to set up. And what that is, is setting up a separate username and password for different people. Okay. Most of the time, business owners don't do this, but I highly recommend it. Okay. So you're going to go to this company drop down menu, set up users and passwords set up users. Okay. You'll see that we have just the admin set up right now. That's what you don't want to give out to somebody else. Okay. So we want to add a user. We're going to say that this is, um, username, password, uh, let's say, and just make up a password. Okay. Okay. We're going to hit next. Okay, so you say, what do you want this user to have access to? So you have options, all areas, selected areas, or external accountant. Okay, so in this case, this is going to be an internal employee. We're going to select areas of QuickBooks, so hit next. Okay, so it's going to take you through all these steps, sales and accounts receivable. Do you want them to have access to sales and accounts receivable? Do you want them to enter invoices, sales receipts, sales orders, receiving payments, etc.? If not, then we're going to say next and leave it on no access. Okay. But you can choose full access or selective, uh, access where they can only create transactions, create and print, uh, or create and print reports. Okay. Let's say no access to this hit next purchases and accounts payable. Uh, we want selective access. They can only create transactions. All right. Hit next checking and credit cards. Uh, do you want them to see your checking account or make deposits, print checks, etc.? May not be a good idea. So we'll say no access. Okay, inventory, they can have full access. Time tracking, no access. Payroll and employees. Okay, you don't want them seeing the payroll information, so hit no access. Sensitive accounting activities, again, uh, transferring funds between accounts, making journal entries, online banking, no. Okay, financial reporting, uh, let's say create sensitive reports only. All right, changing or deleting. Do you want them to be able to change transactions? No, we don't. Okay. And then it's going to give you a summary and it's going to say, okay, here's basically what you've chosen and make sure that that's all right. And you hit finish. And now we have a new user set up. So this user this is what you're going to give them as their login information. This does two things. One, it allows you to restrict what they see and don't see and what they can and can't do. And two, uh, in QuickBooks, there's what's called an audit trail. So that if something changed in QuickBooks or something you log in and you're like, hey, you know, I, I know that this deposit was here. What happened to it? You can go into the audit trail and you can see who logged in and who changed it. All right. So it's a good way to track who does what in QuickBooks. So again, highly recommend this simple way to help avoid fraud 
and to help, you know, avoid you getting ripped off in your business. Make sure you practice this and don't give out that admin login information to your employees or to somebody else that's going to be in your QuickBooks file. All right. For more great tips and full training videos on how to use QuickBooks properly, the right way so that you can, you, you know, make the right decisions, guide your business in the right direction, grow your business and increase your cash flow, head over to the QuickBooks University at qbuniversity.org. Got a lot of great stuff over there. Also have some great free videos that you can uh, sign up for uh, to help you record things right in QuickBooks. All right, head on over. Love to see you over there. Talk to you soon.